John Lawrenson claims that the FDA has been corrupted before, and he suggests that the powerful AIDS industry is manipulating the public trust. And as Duesberg points out, nothing good has come out of it at all. They have not saved one single life in 10 years. They have not developed one helpful drug in 10 years. In fact, they're dispersing AZT to 200,000 Americans in the name of a hypothesis that stands unproven, a drug that is the most toxic drug that has ever been licensed for long-term consumption in the free world. By far the most toxic drug. That probably helps 200,000 people to getting AIDS and dying every year. So it's the merits of that monopoly or that structure that is controlling seven and a half billion dollars for its research and treatment and a, a similar amount for cancer research currently in this country. Duisberg says it's becoming obvious now. We are being deliberately misled. I think it is too late to make the case of innocence that they didn't know any better. They should have asked themselves, even if I had never been around, are we on the right track if we don't get it? That's what's called the scientific method. If a hypothesis fails, you're obliged to consider an alternative, not to defend your vested interest in, in the prevailing hypothesis. Your companies, your papers, your grants, your television notoriety, and so on. Uh, if you're an honest scientist, if you're concerned about the fate of people who pay for it and die from it, you should say, maybe we should look at something else. And that's, they have failed to do. And I think the judgment on them should be just the same as for any other people who fail to live up to professional ethics. Do we call this um, fraud? That's one word, yes. You could use this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Inten others. Intentional. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's no longer innocent. I think we should. If they had a Nuremberg trial on this, I don't think they would all be coming home free. <laughs> Is it time the public demanded a congressional investigation? Are the perpetrators of the HIV hypothesis intentionally guilty of scientific misconduct that has caused mass genocide? Will Congress even respond? The AIDS establishment has itself well-rooted in both political parties. HIV is a relic from the Reagan Republicans, but it's been the Democrats in Congress who have continually escalated AIDS funding. During his term, Bill Clinton has raised the AIDS budget $252 million, cannibalizing research funds from other diseases. Critics say that the overfunding of AIDS is what has led to its failure and has enticed scientists into corrupt research like rats to cheese. Many are cynically asking, is AIDS some kind of government conspiracy to eliminate undesirables like homosexuals, IV drug users, and their offspring? Blacks particularly are suspicious. AIDS has hit African Americans extremely hard. How many people have lost a job, gone through a divorce, been imprisoned, taken AZT, had an abortion, or committed suicide because of the HIV hypothesis? Is the war on AIDS part of some global 2000 plan to limit the population? Or is it just the old love of money working through a government program? The AIDS affair uh, as in, is involving thousands of people who really don't know one another, but they all are acting in what appears to be a purposeful fashion. And um, the only explanation that I can offer is that the hidden hand is in operation again that the, the hidden hand only works because it, money is involved. Money is exchanging hands uh, in, in, at every level in the market. Is it money that's caused the U.S. Department of Health, Congress, and the media to fail to ensure the public trust? As long as citizens remain vastly unaware of this, there's only one hope left, the grassroots. The group HEAL, which stands for Health Education AIDS Liaison, is one such organization. With chapters now starting around the world, HEAL flatly refuses to take any contributions from the pharmaceutical companies of the AIDS industry and strongly denounces the HIV AIDS death diagnosis. HEAL provides books, videotapes, speaking seminars, and support to anyone affected by HIV. But most importantly, HEAL presents what has long been needed, hope and optimism that AIDS patients can recover. Many of HEAL's members are long-term survivors of the AIDS crisis. 
Dr. Michael Elner, president of the New York chapter, has been trained in hypnotherapy. He claims that the government's AIDS awareness campaign is a form of mass hypnosis that works psychologically like the witch doctor's magic death bone. Fear of HIV, like fear of the magic bone, drives the believer to visualize that they are dying. I am saying to you that our newspapers, our television, and our doctors are using high-tech electronic bone pointing. HIV equals AIDS equals... It's one of the most vicious forms of terrorism I have ever seen. Christine Majori experienced this terror personally when she tested HIV positive. She vividly recalls the fear and hopelessness instilled in her by her physician. Don't waste your money, don't waste your time on vitamins. There's nothing you can do for your immune system. Just wait till you get sick, and then we'll give you AZT. Christine became suspicious later when a new HIV test came back inconclusive. Now she's left the AIDS organizations she had at one time been a spokesperson for and heads up the Los Angeles chapter of HEAL. HEAL continually speaks out against the drumbeat of the HIV AIDS death march. But how long will it take until the public is aware? Is there any hope that the scientific community can free itself from the quagmire of its own arrogance? Has our war against AIDS completely lost its objective and now only exists to serve itself? With billions of dollars flowing and over 93,000 AIDS organizations, we have to ask ourselves, how hard are these people trying to put themselves out of work by stopping AIDS? How many lives have we lost? How many hearts have been broken? We are losing the war against AIDS. But what is worse, we are losing the ability to be accountable to reality. Have we put too much confidence in science, the government, and our own integrity? Or is the real problem that we've tried to evade the truth with high-tech excuses and politically correct programs that have only made matters worse? Why is our government spending $13 billion a year to fight a war against drugs, then completely disavowing that drug use itself is the cause of AIDS? Scientists have said that someday man may live to be a thousand years old. But before that day can come, we have to find a way to stop deceiving ourselves, individually and collectively. If HIV has failed, how long will it take for us to face the facts? You know, this thing is going to be studied long after our time. This is so much greater than the Lysenko affair. I'm urging all of my colleagues to save all of their papers and and, and make the historical record as complete as possible. What was the, what was the dynamics of the, the events that led to poisoning these people with AZT? Because this is a major historical event that is going to be studied for a hundred years. How the United States gave AIDS to the world. <laughs>